How do you build the perfect Facebook ad? Well, I probably don't even know that completely, but I have done over $60 million with Facebook ads and I have a pretty damn good approach, I would say, just due to my track record. And I wanna go over a couple ways of which we kind of put together our brief for Facebook ads, some of the stuff that I don't see anyone else talking about and I don't really see any of my students doing this and so like educate them on it. Uh, people I consult with and things like that. So we're gonna show you the couple things that we need to get together before we can build out that brief or Facebook ad and then taking that and turning it into a Facebook ad. So before we get started, if you're questionable why I'm credible to be teaching these things or questioning why I'm credible to be teaching these things, I've done over $60 million with Facebook ads for my partners. I run a Facebook ads agency and I coach and mentor students. I have links for both of those things below in the description box. Now, before we get started, hit that like button and hit that subscribe button for new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And let's dive into the video. So how to build the perfect Facebook ad. So the problem I see with most ads is that they're focusing on too many personas in one ad. I see like people try to focus on like five or six different personas in one ad. Problem is when you speak to a lot of things, you speak to no one. Next thing is they're focusing on way too many benefits in one ad, focusing on too many desires in one ad, and focusing on too many features in one ad. When you overload the prospect with an ad, with all these different benefits, desires, features, and personas, you leave the ad scrambled and you're not really sure what you just took away from this ad. So when we consolidate and be very concise with our messaging and very specific our messaging to one persona, one desire, one benefit, one P, uh, feature and persona, I think I said persona. What happens is we create a better ad. So we're gonna use this ad today as our breakdown for today. And we're gonna dig into kind of pulling it apart for specific things that I want you to replicate in your ads to better improve your advertising approach. Now, I know you've seen this ad before. Uh, and I don't even know, I don't really think it's a Facebook ad specifically, but I know you've seen this ad before. I just needed a simple ad. One, because I was also on a time crunch, I was putting this together. But trust me, everything you learn, you can apply to your campaigns, regardless if you're on Shopify, Legion, app installs, whatever. We've seen success with this specific method across all industries. So number one thing is that you want to determine uh, your desires across your market, your mass market desires. This is simply the things that people want, the wants of your market. Now, iPod is an evolution of a product, which is a CD player. So this is also, and not to like get you guys to, uh, I'm gonna say twist it in the head, but this is a level three market sophistication. What that means is, is that there's other products out there that already solves this problem. So we have to introduce a new mechanism to give people hope again uh, basically a new product. So for us, because the CD player is already a mass market thing, then we simply looked at the desires of what people had around the CD player. And some of the things was that they wanted more storage, basically to hold more songs and better like portability, you know, better to be able to like, imagine like a big CD player, if the clip is your belt, stuff like that, it's very difficult. So better portability and more storage. Now you might have a product with no competition and there's no one else out there with this product. Then you just simply need to focus on your company. You still focus on your market. How do we do market research? Uh, we watch a lot of YouTube videos. <laughs> a lot of YouTube videos is our favorite place. Amazon reviews of competitor products, YouTube reviews of, Amazon, of competitor products, uh, typing in the different things that your consumer would technically type in when uh, dealing with that particular problem that you're going after a desire, like things like that. Um, looking at competitors' websites, competitors' ads, all that good stuff. So we find our market desires. Now our market desires doesn't necessarily go directly to our product, that's okay. We simply just wanna know the desires of our market and we're gonna channel them onto our product. Again, what is the desire? This is what your customer wants. I want more money. I want to lose weight. I want to scale my e-com store. I want to be the best husband I can be. Things like that. It's the I wants of your customers or your, your market. Now, market research for personas. So this is where we're gonna basically, if we found our desires, now we're gonna look at our personas, the different types of people across our market that fits our product. So I identify three and look, to be honest with you, I chat GPT this really quick, just these personas, because again, I didn't have time to go super deep into the personas of the iPod, but I thought these were pretty damn close. 
Um, the tech minimalist, the fitness enthusiast, and the classic music lover. I'm not sure about this one, but definitely I've seen plenty of um, iPods and tech minimalists and then iPods with fitness enthusiasts. So I think those are pretty solid right there. Classic music lover, and that's about a 50-50. So that's our personas of the different types of people that make up our market. Then the next one is what we wanna do is list our features. So we've, we found our market desires, we found our market personas, and then now what we wanna do is list our features. So you simply just take your product and list the features of your product. Five gigabytes of storage. Here's the dimensions. Here's the battery up to 10 hours. Very simple and straightforward. You're just listing the features of your product. Now what you wanna do is you wanna turn those features into benefits. So five gigabytes of storage. How does five gigabytes of storage benefit me as the consumer? Well, if you look it up, five gigabytes of storage and you divide that by how many megabytes a song is, it comes out to a thousand songs. So I thought that was pretty cool. And dimensions is that, hey, this is pretty small. What about it, is it small? that's a benefit to the consumer is it fits in their pockets. So now what we wanna do is take those benefits and we wanna connect them to our mass desires. So 1,000 songs, the mass desire for more songs. Fit in your pocket, mass desire for better port portability. So we've connected a benefit to a desire. Hope you guys are still tracking right now. I know I'm going pretty quick, but this is keeping it pretty simple. So for our ad brief, this is basically what we put together before we actually build the ad. We basically start to list out all these things that we need to showcase in the ad. So we need to showcase the feature of five gigabytes because that's the feature we want to focus on. The benefit of a thousand songs, the desire to listen to more of their favorite music, the persona, the tech minimalist, and the creative type is an image. So now we have basically an ad brief. Now, how do you choose what feature to, to like use? How do you choose what benefit to use? How do you use what desire to use? Well, the first things first is work backwards. So choose the desire you wanna use. So for me, I wanted to use the desire of listening more of their favorite music. And then what benefit matches that desire? A thousand songs. And then what feature matches that benefit? Five gigabytes. Very simple. Now the persona, that one you just basically take your best guess. So I might build five ads all with the same brief with just a different persona. So we can have one for tech minimalist with all of this. Then we can have another one for the fitness enthusiast and then so on. And then the creative type, image, just what I wanna use. And honestly, I'm just saying creative type image just because we already have this ad built. I use 50-50 for video and images inside of my ad accounts. Now, let's look at a couple obstacles we need to overcome with this ad that we're building. First off, we need to appeal to our main desire. So what's the main desire? Listen to more of their favorite music. We need to appeal to that desire. We have to appeal to that desire. We can do two ways. We can state the desire or state the solution that gives them that desire. Two different ways to do it. Next one is we need to speak to that main desire of our solution and benefit of that solution, which we already talked about. We need to appeal to our target audience. Who's our target audience? Tech minimalists who have a desire to listen more of their favorite music. So we need to appeal to that tech audience. And then the ad I will show in today's video that I'm about to show you in a second doesn't do it, but we also need to showcase the feature that gives the main benefit that appeals to our main desire. So we also need to show the feature, but I don't really show it in this particular video. Okay, just cause I, again, just pulled it to show you guys but it's exactly what we do on the Facebook ad side. So let's take a review of this. So benefits shown as connected to our mass desire, 1,000 songs in your pocket. Now this is almost connecting to two mass desires, 1,000 songs, more of your favorite music, and then in your pocket for portability. So it's almost showing essentially two benefits in a way. Next one is that the feature used is shown through the main benefits. So, you know, 1,000 songs in your pocket. I guess it kind of talks more about the feature, but we could put a feature below iPod, five gigabytes or something like that. Um, now, the next one is this ad could appeal, appeal to any persona, but let's take a look at some of the characteristics of this ad. It's very minimalist, simple, and focuses just on the device. Something a tech minimalist would resonate with. Now, if we showed a person working out with an iPod strapped to their arm, then this could easily go for the fitness enthusiast. So you have to understand that when you select a specific persona that you wanna go after, that's your whole ad, how it's built. So if I'm targeting, like I said, the fitness enthusiast, or maybe I'm targeting, 
I don't know, a mom with a nine to five, then I, the visuals I show in that ad is going to appeal to that specific persona. So that's why the persona is important. Then the feature we showcase and the benefit we showcase, all that good stuff. Now, as you start to build these briefs and everything, what you want to do is you want to swap out one variable at a time. So maybe we can try this exact brief with just a different persona. That's something we can do. We could do this exact brief except with a video instead of an image. That's another thing we could do. We could swap the desire for better portability and we can showcase the benefit of it fits in your pocket and the feature of those small dimensions. So this is how you can mess around with that brief to produce different variations but everything the key here is or everything i want to try to communicate to you is that it's going to eliminate focusing on too many personas on one ad it's going to eliminate focusing on too many benefits focusing on too many desires and too many features it's focusing on one specific and that's what's important right there and that way if we want to if we want to target more personas then all we do is go create more ads with this same brief and just change the persona for each one simple as that so hope this video helps you guys out hope it uh can improve your efficiency with your ad creation and uh yeah guys thank you all so much for watching hit the like button hit that subscribe button drop any comments below and i'll make sure to get to them hope you guys have a great rest of y'all day peace out